No one likes us clothing is the Millwall clothing range. T-shirts, caps, polos, they've got it all. Visit www.noonelikesus.co.uk or why not visit the Blue Anchor where a selection of shirts can be bought at the bar. www.noonelikesus.co.uk Hi, I'm Gary Rowett, and you're listening to the world-famous Acton Millwall. Hello and good morning, dear listeners. Welcome to our regular Friday show. Something for the weekend, sir. And here is my regular Friday guest. It's the man himself, Mr. Neil Fissler. How are you, Neil? Yeah, not too bad, Nick. Not too bad. A lot better than I was last Saturday afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's been a difficult week at the Den, hasn't it? And um, I thought we'd mention that in the context of the breaking news this morning that West Bromwich Albion have let Steve Bruce go after, uh, I think it was just eight months in, in the job. They actually sit below us in the table, but with less defeats now. I mean, they, they've been beaten four times, a lot of draws for West Brom. I'm just thinking in terms of our own um, situation. I mean, we got beat last week at West Bromwich, at West Bromwich, at Blackburn Rovers. Um, and then a, a divided view on that draw midweek at Rotherham. It's, I don't think the heat's off Gary Rowe at the moment, especially when you're seeing names like Steve Bruce. Middlesbrough come to us tomorrow. Manager less after sacking Chris Wilder, another rated name in championship terms. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's been a it's been a funny flat period lately at the Den. I still don't think he's out of the woods by a long stretch, Neil. Do you? Well, I'm conflicted on this because I think you've got to look at. I I, I still think it will need something pretty nasty from uh, the crowd to turn toxic to get rid of him. John Berylson is notoriously, if you like, patient with managers. Loyal. Yeah, yeah. loyal. He sticks with them for probably in some cases a lot longer than he really ought to, but he isn't one of these uh, hire and fire them type managers or chairman, is he? No. Um, so, it, funnily enough, if you'd have asked me after last Saturday when I turned off as soon as the second goal went in and didn't really give a toss about the game after the loss of Blackburn, two one loss of Blackburn, yeah. Uh, I'd have said, let's get rid of him um, you will immediately. But then uh, but then we go up to uh, Rotherham on Wednesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday night? Wednesday night, yeah, Wednesday night. Yeah, Wednesday night. And he changes the formation and all of a sudden <laughs> we're playing attacking football, boring Gary's gone out the window. And uh, it, it, it was just sheer bad luck that we didn't win that game. I still think that they'll give him until the World Cup. I think that's, what, three, four weeks away now? It is. Well, it's a, it's um, early early November. that we Well, about mid-November we break for the World Cup. Um, so we've still got a, a, a few games in this slice of the season to go. I, 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 know, I know what you mean. I, I think the danger point really for many of us and I think speaking for yourself Neil, but I know certainly a lot of other people around the Millwall scene is is the destruction of the spirit of of, of, of following Millwall I, I went to non-league last week I didn't go to Blackburn I didn't even bother trying to watch it on on stream I went to a non-league game at Beckham had a nice afternoon and all the other things that we've spoken about many many times when you go to to the non-league scene um, I was out Wednesday night. So there's two games, mill games in a row that I've missed watching the Lions. I, I, from what I read on Wednesday, as you've said already, change of formation, change of bodies, change of approach, possibly, and um, differing views. I mean, I, I think the second half sounds like it was a lot better than the the first half. We've obviously had a wonder goal from our talented, creative Dutch midfielder, come striker Zian Fleming, and He's, you know, he's, he really stands out. He's a shining light in a, in a in a difficult period. But what's really striking me, I think, in the light of that news today that Bruce has been sacked and and, and Wilder, and and so on, is um, 
other clubs make these changes for better or for worse. We 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 do seem to, or John Berrison does seem to value loyalty above all else. Um, it was interesting. I was I was trying to do a call yesterday with with Merv, and I was looking at the two thousand and well, the, the championship winning season two thousand two thousand one when uh, Theo acted quite ruthlessly to um, get rid of Rhino and Macca and and bring in Mark McGee. And then obviously to lose Mark McGee afterwards and bring in Dennis Wise and, and Ray Wilkins for, for many a man of many many um, you know many sides Theo but he was he acted when he had to I just wonder whether sometimes that John Berylson just delays it a little bit too long I mean obviously much remains to be seen how we play tomorrow I think you're right about the crowd and its um, potential to go down the toxic route if we can get an early goal then the mood changes again I suppose that's I suppose that's the the lottery of football, isn't it? You know, things things change in moments and um, managers live on like the cats with nine lives if, if they can get the result tomorrow. But I, I don't like the... I, 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 don't, I don't think that a bad performance tomorrow is going to do his cause any good at all. No, I don't think it will do his, his cause any good. But you look at it and we played all right on Wednesday night, yeah? We, yeah, yeah. Okay, we rode our luck slightly in the first half. I think there are still players badly out of form, uh, and he should have made. He he has got this thing of square square pegs in round holes. Yeah, yeah. Ian Fogel slammer as a winger just doesn't work for me. No, uh, he, he he needs to find. He needs to he needs to find the right balance. But he actually looked lost. It was almost like we were playing with 10 men. Murray Wallace, I love Murray Wallace. Fantastic footballer, but he's badly out of form. He should have played Styles there because every time they attacked, they attacked down Murray Wallace's side in the first half. And, and then you've got Jake Cooper, normally Mr. Dependable, dived in, gave a totally unnecessary penalty away. Did you think that was a penalty? Did you? Did, was that? Yeah. I, I've only seen the, the YouTube clips, yeah. listeners, so I'm not going to. Absolutely, you know. absolute yeah. penalty. Okay. And then to compound it, the goalkeeper dives over the top of the ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I've only seen this. The, the... That depends upon which way you want to look upon it. He either went over the top of the ball, or the ball went underneath him. But it was definitely one of those that. He should really have saved, and I thought he should could probably have saved both both goals at Blackburn last weekend. I suppose there's the debate about Bart, who makes makes those kinds of saves, maybe makes more yeah. um, mundane errors in in terms of distribution versus a decent goalkeeper, George. I'm not going to knock him, but you know he, he's let two in there that maybe maybe Bart might have saved. I don't know, um, and maybe. Lucas, in a penalty that Bart might have saved, but it's all if buts and maybes, isn't it? You look upon it, they were they were there for the taking. They had a new manager in the guy from just up the expressway. Yeah. We didn't capitalise on it. Uh, Same stories I was picking up last week, Neil, at Blackburn. I mean the number of the number of callers who were there who said at half time the game was there to be taken. Same phrase. Um obviously we let that one get away from us. And similar kind of vibes I'm picking up from from the Rotherham performance. Yeah, it's difficult for me me to say. I didn't see them, so I'm going by others' reports here. This wasn't for the one to try in at Rotherham. I think it was. I think Tom Bradshaw missed three or four chances that yeah. he should really have taken. Tyler Bury missed an absolute sitter that he ought to have taken. Yeah. So. It's not as if we weren't creating chances and then um, and we weren't getting in position to finish those chances. We were, and and I guess that's just the way that football is, isn't it? Sometimes you take your chances, sometimes you don't. Yeah, and, and Tyler is is a creative, and uh, you know we've said a few times it's great to see him start. <laughs> you know he can't be criticised for not not being consistent if he's not starting. And um, okay, he's missed a chance there, but that's that is the way it goes sometimes. Um, won the goal from Fleming. And we've all seen the, the YouTube clip of, of that goal. I mean, it was some strike. But the instinct to cut inside and the the self-confidence to take on a shot like that, Neil, really makes him really um, stand out for me. I also like, I mean, Tyler's confidence to, to get himself into positions. I mean, that's what you want from players, get yourself into positions and prepare to have a go. 
Um, and I think Fleming hit the crossbar as well with a, with a free kick in the second half. Yeah, that's right. I think the goalkeeper pushed it onto the bar. Did, did pushed it, it on the bar, yeah. Pushed it onto the bar or something. There's definitely a player there, but it's just frustrating that he scores a lot of goals because you can because you only have to take a look at his record in Dutch football. Hmm. And he's just starting to show that. But are we utilising him in the right way? Are we playing players where they prefer to be played or where they're best to be played? And you have to say probably not because there's no team to... Sam as a winger. No, it comes back to the managerial choice. I'm just just looking at the the, the side edge of George Long and Goal. We've got backline Murray, who we've mentioned already, is out of form. Jake has looked shaky all season. It's great to see the return of Sean Hutchinson and Danny Mack. Um, midfield, uh, Billy Mitchell and, and George Savile. Fleming kind of in his attacking midfielder role, I suppose you'd call it. And then up front, Bradshaw, Vogel Summer. And Tyler, uh, what's that phrase? He get, uh, Gary Rowett listen. Does he does he get it? As Ben Anthony sent to me, does he get it that he we, he needs to change tack and maybe go for a more um, a creative stance? I don't know if that's the right way to put it. He's certainly his five three two, which he still talks about in, in his interviews. Whether he might he might switch back to that. Uh, for me, it hasn't worked all season, and you've got to kind of go with players that do work and look dangerous because the alternative is that we get yet another mediocre performance out of um, tomorrow's match and that's that's going to be um it's, it's, it's going to turn into a, 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 a you know the danger zone from gary rowett's continued employment uh yeah, I think gary rowett needs to be under no illusions that that the millwall crowd once it turns it turns on you and yes, it does yeah no, no coming back from it uh, because it will turn ugly. Well, we all know what it can be like. And it just, it, last weekend, just, or Wednesday night, smacked me of a desperate last throw of the dice. Well, to change formation. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Because he, yeah, I'm not a big one for statistics and things like that, but I would say he's probably not played this formation or not started this formation too many times in his tenure at the no. club does he but does he believe in it is my question i mean he, he believes in the the formation that he has fielded to date the five three uh, whatever way you want to call it five three two or whatever the three you know uh, defenders and the wing backs he believes in that it, i think the problem that i can see is you know he's, he's been pressured into changing to a, a four man back line and a more um, attacking style, but that doesn't come naturally to him and he doesn't really buy it himself. Um, in, in life, listeners, if you're trying to do something you don't believe in, you're, you're going to you're gonna fall short at some point. Um, we'll see what we get tomorrow, really. Um, I wanted to just touch on something that um, a, a few people have mentioned uh, on, online and on social media, which is fans that want Gary Rowett to go, which I think is a perfectly reasonable <laughs> um, starting point, Neil. But then that the, the follow-on to that is they want us to lose in order to hasten his, his end. I, I don't think I've ever gone to a Millwall match. I can't, if I have, I can't think of it. I don't think I would have done ever where I want us to lose. I always want us to win, no matter what. I find it quite strange that some people do say, I hope we get beat and then he'll get the sack. Um, do you, do you, do you, by that attitude, I, I, I don't personally. But you, how do you see that? Uh, not the Millwall I know. I think not the Millwall. No, that's a good, that's a, an appropriate use of the phrase. Yeah, you don't see it around. I, I don't get it personally. Yeah, yeah, it's probably the most appropriate use of that phrase we've had for a very long time. And <laughs> you know, I never tire of wheeling it out. No, no you, don't. <laughs> you don't want your team to lose. Yeah, even if it means getting rid of the manager. I think at Millwall, there's there's a, there's a minority of fans that still want Neil Harris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it at Gillingham? I don't know. The last time I looked, they were, weren't doing terribly well. But anyway. Yeah, but they could play in National League South. <laughs> uh, as long as Neil Harris was still in charge, uh, it would be fine by them. Uh, the football is, has been poor and you've not wanted to watch it, to be quite no, honest. No, that's a problem. I, I, I accept that. because I, I yeah, like... entertainment industry. 
in, as I think I said last week, we're not being entertained. But I don't get the mentality that you want your club to lose so we get rid of the manager. We could lose and not get rid of the manager. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you can express a view. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't have a problem particularly... Within reason, with fans calling for his head. I mean, we've all sat in the in the den. We've heard all the um, all the you know the the, the exclamations um, to, to directed towards him. But um, to actually set out with the idea that if we get beat, then we get rid of a manager you don't like. I just find that a bit. Um, I don't know. It's a bit juvenile. I think in in, in many. Of them. Yeah, it's pretty distasteful, and you're not. Are you a proper fan are you a real fan if you want your team to beat just so you get rid of somebody you don't like it's i don't know i don't get it you never <laughs> it's you an internet know. thing it's an internet thing it's not, not always to be in the best development in human evolution i think it has its good side but it does have that that downside yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see tomorrow manager manager less um middlesbrough come to the den they actually won in midweek <laughs> the, the the sack the manager bounce of a, a, a one nil win over birmingham um and as i say opinions vary i'm just looking at one i've selected here which is mill halfway line says i hope we don't hear any rubbish after wednesday i hope we don't hear any rubbish about steadying the ship aside from fleming's wonder goal that was dreadful a performance bereft of any belief or passion what on earth is going on in this team i would um, it, agree with that no, and he, he says he nearly switched over to the watch the repair shop on on BBC TV. But there's a reply here from Angelo, who often contributes to the show. Uh, shout out to Angelo. Um, he says we wasn't we weren't anywhere as bad as you're suggesting. We got the back four, and we created enough chances to win the game. It's a marked improvement. Um, I, 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 yeah, I'm, without seeing it, I'm going to take that as my my positive spin on the game, Neil. I think. Yeah, but that is a pretty accurate assessment, and I've yeah. said it. I've said it at the start of this, we created enough chances. We just didn't take the extra chance that would have been enough to have secured us three points. And then we'd be talking, yeah, well, all this would be academic, really, wouldn't it? We wouldn't be talking about how yeah. going. My biggest fear is that we get through this, or boring Gary gets through this uh, uh, sticky bit period. of difficulty, yeah. Uh, he picks up a few points. We climb the table because it is fairly tight there. Well, I win think... tomorrow puts us on 17 and Sunderland are in eighth on 17. So, you know, I know they've got a game to play too, but a couple of wins and we, we're up the table again. Um, exactly. And you and the thing. My biggest fear is that if we do pick up those points, does boring Gary revert to type and... <laughs> Hey, <laughs> gets his three man back line back again in his wing back. Which, which is <laughs> deeply unpopular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably an understatement. <laughs> I would. Well, you know, well, 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 I would say that. Uh, I would say it's probably the most unpopular. Yeah, but in fact, that three man back, the three man back three is probably about the only thing that's ever united most Millwall fans, isn't it? It takes a lot to you bring Millwall fans into one unified viewpoint. I can tell you that much, listeners. Yeah, it's not the way we play our football. Millwall have always played their football. Certainly, that I can remember, we're a four four two club, aren't we? We're an emotional club. We we feed off the power of the crowd and, you know, the kind of... Um, Mill's the eternal cup tie club. Now, what I would say to that, because everyone, I, I can imagine the uh, hundreds, not I was nearly said thousands, but I don't think we get that many. <laughs> the hundreds of listeners <laughs> nodding their heads as I'm saying we're an emotional club. We're, we play cup tie football, blah, blah, blah. But it's, we've never achieved great success with that. Um, I think... Rowett's answer to all of the criticism would be that if you don't concede goals, or except we've conceded goals this season, then you don't lose games, and that's how you progress up the table. The problems being, of course, the defence has been very, very fragile, which um, we've touched on a few times. Now. So um, we shall see. Let's go one win at a time. This, we could do with a win tomorrow. Middlesbrough come to us in 18th position at the moment, one point behind, manager less. At the minute, having got rid of Chris Wilder, another rated manager that's fallen by the wayside this season, alongside Steve Bruce now. Um, but a win tomorrow will certainly take us up towards the the the, uh, the the top end of the 
of the table. Um, fingers crossed for tomorrow. Let's let's see how we get on. Oh, strange one actually, because as you say, he's rated. But I was hearing things that he was making demands and wasn't happy with the amount of money available. And of course, uh, of, of course, you go online and you look mm. on Hoff and Twitter and Facebook groups, and and a lot of people. A oh, wild has been sat. Get him in now. Yeah, and yeah, he's, yeah. He's, a decent-ish manager, but... Well, they all, they all seem to have their day. I remember a few years ago when Mark Warburton was doing great things. He, he went from, from... Was it Brentford he was at? Then he went to Glasgow Rangers, I think. And then he finished up at uh, QPR. But there was a period where he was like the man that was, was presiding over a certain type of... Um, approach the football um and then they go off it's like you know it's like they, they, they go flat and i think maybe at the moment wilder has gone flat his fizz has gone from his lager and um it's, it's become all a bit bit last nighty um it's, that's the football isn't it everyone has their moment and it seems to pass quite quickly neil it's it's a very very difficult profession yeah well, i think that rabbit probably was in the same uh situation as wilder when he when he came down here yeah uh came down to Millwall. Uh, he was seen as not being very loyal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which he's put to, put to rest, really, I suppose. With, with us. Yeah, bank from job to job. So this is kind of rehabilitation. If you believe online, he's touted, he, his agent touts him for every job going. Yeah. And certainly to some extent, to some extent, I don't blame people for that. I mean, you know, it's, it's a job and um, football's a strange thing because as fans, we demand like unswerving in the blood loyalty from from employees, and you know, like in we we, we wouldn't give to any employer. I mean, if, if you're working for uh, X company and Y company is offering bigger wages for the same work, you're probably going to be tempted to 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 you know try and get a job there. So um, it's yeah. it's a strange business in that. Way. I don't blame people wanting more money. I don't blame Jed for wanting more money and move on. Did you know? I mean, it's this. Life. Yeah, well, yeah, well, we, yeah, we, yeah, we were speaking about how some people want us to lose, so he gets the sack. So, yeah. so I guess <laughs> it's really yeah, yeah. same kind of loyalty, aren't you? If you're doing his job and trying to and trying to get himself a nice commission and you another job or a better contract somewhere else, it's just the way that football is. So I still go back to the fact: Are we going to get a better manager? Or a manager of better standing than Gary Rowett. Yeah, I can't remember. It made the point to me that any new manager wants to bring their own players and their own staff and all the rest of it in. So it's by no means a cheap option. Um, much, much better if Gary Rowett can see some kind of road to Damascus style light and change approach and start to get us playing more attacking football, certainly at the den, um, which is where you need to impress your home audience. I think a popular opinion would be, Nick, to get some attacking coaching. Some oh, support. Yeah, in- I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm not anti-Gary Rabbit, don't get me wrong. Uh, yeah, but I know I call him boring Gary and, and all that. <laughs> in the heat of the moment, I think I, I, I forgive anyone anything in the heat of the moment because fundamentally everyone... I hope everyone that listens to our show fundamentally wants me all to win and speed and succeed and progress. Um, but I think it's I think it's just strange when when people actually want the club to to go down to a defeat that won't help our cause in order to get shot of a an individual that um, you know maybe they that for some various reasons I don't like. I, I'm, I'm with you. I don't, I don't really have an opinion on Gary Rowett in 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 any sense other than. I want to be entertained when I go to watch Mill, particularly at the Den. I'll put up with a boring show away from home because that comes with the turf. But at the Den, I want to see some action. That's really all I'm after in in, in truth and, and hopefully some measure of success at some point. But, you know, after 50 years, that's not been the driving motivation for following the Lions, Neil, for me. Um, it's more about the match day entertainment, really, you know, um, enjoying yourself. Yeah, no, exactly. You go down there, you pay... <laughs> a not inconsiderable amount of money to watch a game of football now, and you just want to be entertained. It is an entertainment industry. I think some people do take it a bit too seriously at times. I think we all take it ser- far too seriously at times. But well, yeah, that's, that's the, we, 
that we'd pick up from where we left off and the, that the performance is a bit better because the den has been a fortress for us in recent times, hasn't it? Difficult. Well, historically, it's why we it's why we keep home hooked on the club, really, isn't it? It's, yeah. Um, it's, it's a prime um, motivation. Um, there we are. Find a way of motivating the crowd. It's not the... Yeah, well, I know that there's a great thing that people sell. The crowd must motivate the players. No, it's the other way around, actually. You react to what's going out on the pitch. Well, you want to see some tackles, you want to see some attacking moves, yeah. and you want to see a bit of drama. That's that's really what you what you want when you go to football. Let's take a short break there, listeners. We'll be right back after these messages. Achtung, Mailball. Welcome back to Nick and Neil Something for the weekend show. Um, Neil, just moving us along a little bit, the club have announced a, a, a World Cup break uh, friendly against Brondby of Denmark, yeah, Danish club. Um, at the Den as part of their preparation for the return of, of uh, league football after the World Cup. Um, also, of course, we've got the early start in a sense because we've got the Sunderland away fixture to uh, before the week before we were due to restart. Yeah, they announced this this morning. Do you know what? I quite like the thought of playing foreign opposition. It's better than... It, it, it's just something different to watch, isn't it? It's a different club. It's different a, experience, yeah. Bromby, uh, then twenty sixth of November, Saturday, twenty sixth, one o'clock kickoff for the friendly. Um, interesting choice. Interesting. I suppose they play a similar style of football to to an English club, and um, gives you a good a good chance to get some uh, you know spring back in the legs a little bit after after a few weeks off. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if they were Hummel or some. Uh, Probably they've probably got the same kit manufacturer. Maybe so. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Husky on there, adorning the front of their shirts, as I think uh, the Swedish team we had the other. Month. Yeah, uh, Hammerby. Yeah, played them in the pre. That was that was an interesting yeah. game in a sense. I've always enjoyed watching. I'm I'm not a big friendly fan. I I, I try and avoid them to be honest, but mm. there is thing good about foreign opposition uh, down the den. Uh, I do remember a game against one of the Bucharest teams that almost ended in a riot. I think Tim Cale <laughs> went off for fighting and uh, you, you've got to remember Neil Harris's testimonial against Hearts. That was quite a lively affair. That's always going to be a tasty one, isn't it? The England versus Scotland oh, thing. Bad. And it, it's, yeah. it, Something a little bit different to your normal run of the mill type friendlies. Let's be honest. People say, oh, "Why can't we play Arsenal? Why can't we play Tottenham?" Because a certain section of our crowd will come out and they'll act like wallies, won't they? <laughs> what are the security costs you need for to, to that? I mean, they take those behind closed doors. They have them. They have them at the training ground, don't they? If they, if they do, yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we were shit friendlies, but no, just in, it's it's a game to get some minutes back in the legs. Yeah, okay, I think that they'll probably want some money. Yeah, they're selling tickets. I'm just having a look, um, having a look at the moment. At the... I think they haven't actually announced anything. No details will follow. So at the moment, it's just been announced as a date, 26th of November, Saturday afternoon, yeah, one o'clock. To be honest, yeah, but it's generally about a tenner, isn't it? Yeah, any more than that might be you might not get many in there, but uh, I imagine they'll do it as a uh, the, the West End open. I, I doubt they'll have the whole stadium open for it, but they will stream it as well. So anyone interested in that fixture, uh, it's just been announced today. So um, interesting one. Also, uh, something else I wanted to mention is the club held a, um, a a competition for a design competition for a commemorative badge. I think it's for the Poppy Appeal. Um, it's got certainly got the Poppy on it. Um, it's a Falkland Islands conflict uh, 40th anniversary uh, Mill badge, um, which is uh, designed by Ruben Bailey, and he's got his design. Just looking at it on the on the uh, the Twitter feed here, um, it's got like a depiction of the map of the Falkland Islands with their, their flag, which has like a sheep and a coat of arms on it, with Mill FC underneath it, and a, a lion and a, and a, and a poppy. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking this is for the November uh, Remembrance Day Poppy Appeal, which is a, a, always a great cause. 
Um, I went for a bit of a phase. I, I did a few badges, Neil, um, a little while ago. I haven't done it for a while now, where we did the uh, a Lion Mill um, Poppy badge and the club and the, and, the, and the Poppy. And other people have done similar things. And it was all for the benefit of the Royal British Legion Poppy appeal. Um, I, I did it. I, I, I slightly struggle with it, if I'm going to be upfront with listeners, because I just find that the remembrance is, is a... It's a thing in its own right, and it, it, it extends across all sections of society that took part in these conflicts. Um, many, many people from many, many backgrounds across the country and from beyond the seas, really, um, took part in the Falkland Island conflict. Um, and I always find the association of it with football, um, I don't know if it's problematic. It, I, 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 solved, I solved this dilemma in my mind by knowing that it raised money, which I think fundamentally is all it comes down to for me. And that's that's and the, the badges were very popular. But I don't know if I've explained my dilemma particularly well, listeners, but I just find the the, the association of football with, with war, um, I don't know if it's crass, but it's it, it's, it's a little bit of a problem for me. Uh, I don't know if, if I've explained that particularly well, Neil, or if it, if, it, if it sounds plausible to you. But I regarded it in the end as, well, if it makes money for a great cause, which is what I wanted to do, so be it. But I've always found that a little bit of an odd, an odd mix. Do you know, I've never really thought about it until you, <laughs> until you Have mentioned you not? Have you not? Um, Something that you, yeah, let's get it right. Mel, uh, Bird Off, Hoff yeah. uh, has done some brilliant work on this. Getting this is brilliant. I mean, this this is brilliant. I mean, I, I'm not knocking yeah. this um, far from it. And I've got yeah. probably to buy one myself. And to be honest, the more that it raises, the better. Millwall fans have certainly got behind the Poppy Day. Sean, 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 Sean McCarthy, was it? Yeah, he used to have his stand at uh, Canada. I, I went to interview him. He's a remarkable individual. Yeah, um, I don't think you can do it anymore. I think I think the because the the um, the RBL, the Royal Royal British Legion, actually do their own versions of these football badges now, where you've got club badges with a, a poppy, uh, and for the same reason, I mean, everything I've just said um, makes money, uh, and it makes money for a great cause. So in the end, uh, I think that's what you're saying there, Neil. Is it, it, that's all it comes down to, really. It, I've just always found it an odd, slightly odd mix. But then, you know, they they, they were doing. Uh, Sean was doing um, badges for um, various clubs: cricket, rugby, football, obviously all the London clubs and others. Um, and he, he made fortunes for for them until the copyright thing came up, and he had to. Uh, I think he had to make a stop of it now. Yeah, well, that's yeah, that's probably what it boils down to. Is as it boils down to everything, doesn't it? Copyright, copyright. Yeah, yeah. Um, the lawyer somewhere that will say, oh, "Hold on a minute," and you'd like to think that that people don't hijack this for personal gain, but I'm very, very suspicious, as, especially on eBay. Yeah, I mean that, that people resell them. I mean, this is this is a club thing, and this is this is all entirely, entirely um, for the right reasons, right causes, and it's it's an interesting design. It, apparently, it's, it's forty years since the Falkland conflict, listeners, um, which uh, is amazing because it seems like a very recent thing in my mind. But there it is, forty years ago. Yeah, no, I can remember it like it was almost yesterday. One of my mate's brothers, yeah, went to fight in it, and I can remember him. Being worried, we must have only been ten or twelve at the time. Yeah, and uh, I can remember him being worried that his brother was going off to fight, or he was in the merchant navy, something like that. And I can remember the big street party for the return home. Yeah, you know, somebody who'd been there and came back, and I can still remember him having this onking great knife that he'd taken off an RG. Right. <laughs> I, when, I was, um, when I was doing the union rep, but, uh, uh, listeners might not know, I was, I was a U-Trade union rep for a, a few years, but I represented one of our members who was suffering with, um, well, most immediately he was suffering, I'm not going to obviously disclose too much detail, but he was suffering with alcohol-related issues. Um, and he'd served in the Merchant Navy on one of the ships that had been attacked by the Argentine Air Force for Exocet missile. And to, to put it in a, in a, in a nutshell, it, 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 uh, the post-traumatic dis, uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, which um, 
Is there is, is a thing that's only really been diagnosed more recently, Neil, um, and for many years, I think, especially in the aftermath of this conflict in the early 80s, wasn't really, um, not much was known about it. And I don't think um, anyone really particularly saw it as a thing that you wanted to be diagnosed with. But anyway, the, the, the way that many of the guys dealt with the issues that they, they, they suffered during the conflict was by drinking fundamentally and i helped brett present him in a in a in a in a, in a situation um when i was at, when i was working um so i think the thing that to say is that this this is a great course these conflicts are real things they leave their pros over the years because i'm only talking about a situation that arose a few years ago two or three years ago and that's what 38 37 years on from this conflict so that's that's the benefit of this so my philosophical debate in my head gets solved really when I think that this money will help people that still suffer with the consequences of what they, they saw and endured in that conflict all those years ago and others since in many other conflicts since. Anyway, there we are. Well done, Reuben Bailey. Uh, that's, that's, that's on the, on the um, name checked on the, on the main um, club website, Falkland Island commemoration. Um, I think probably done enough on that. I'm going to move along there and it looks onto a less, um, salubrious subject of also on the Mill um Mill website the club have uh, announced a partnership with a company called Sorari Sorari which is dealing in dig digital trading cards non-fungible tokens and for those listeners like me that have never heard of such uh, such concepts these are kind of they're like trading cards Neil aren't they but, but they they have a digital signature that makes them unique um, the idea I, being, I yeah, think the way to describe them are panini cards without yeah. the card. <laughs> but they're, digi they're digital, aren't they? They're, you get sent an image fundamentally, a panini card, but without the card, without the card. And it's, yeah. but I think the essence of it is because you with a with a modern screen, you can snapshot anything you like, a screenshot anything you like and that's fine that's that's the same image but this these have a digital digital signature don't ask me how it works listeners i'm from a pre prehistoric era but they're, they're made into a unique image and you can buy and trade these things which i think is where the the money comes in for these things and many many i mean i looked on the website of this company Neil Sorari, and it's it's got links with the nfl in america the mlb and all the major Football clubs, no Millwall. Um, they're now, all at it. Now, are you ready for a rant? Um, I've been ranting. Well, not ranting. I've been a monologue. So I'm going to sit back and listen to Neil's rant now. Well, I don't get the crypto NFT space. I'm trying to get down with the kids. Yeah, you know? oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to become like the other podcast. Yeah. I'm yeah, get down with the kids. <laughs> this to me is something the Millwall Supporters Club, who quite frankly are as useful as a chocolate fire guard, should be screaming and hollering about because you look into these things and the Financial Conduct Authority which is an organisation that I yeah. believe uh, that you've had some dealings with. Recently. Yeah, the Lions Trust is, is supposed to be, um, it regulates the financial industry, so it's a big, important thing, yeah. They warn if you buy crypto assets, you should be prepared to lose all the money you invest. Mm. There's, it, it, this is just, this is just, gambling they're, they're, yeah but they're not regulated you know i'm only going by no. i don't know an awful lot about it but i listen to the price of football podcast yeah and they do know something about these kind of things john terry released uh nfts he did. And, uh, the price was 99 percent down on their launch price that's a racket it's a racket, basically. Yeah. yeah, basically, it's a scam. Yeah, it is. It's a scam for younger people. Yeah, and uh, Crawley Town are owned by an NFT company, and uh, they decided that that they were going to release a third kit this year. Right. And 
was only available to supporters who bought NFTs. <laughs> so it's <laughs> one big scam. Yeah, I would urge anybody who's thinking of buying this, don't. Turn away from it. Really, you can trade them. But in practice, you're going to lose your money. You might as well. I, I, you ever tell you what, if somebody wants to buy one of these NFTs, do us a favour, give the money to the Lions Food Hub because... You'll do more good with it. There. I'm just yeah. looking at the website. Uh, in, Sorari, yeah. Yeah, but the website can tell you whatever they want you to tell you. Yeah, well, yeah, well they'll claim to have all of these partnerships and and we do this, we do that, but you're throwing your money away with these things. There's no way, I know we've said it quite a lot recently, that Millwall are thinking of imaginative ways of getting fans to part with the money uh, for this, that, and the other, and this is just another one of those ways. Uh, as a fan base, we should be kicking and screaming against these things. I agree. I agree, Neil. Um, I mean, I'm just looking at the website, sorare.com. It's a big, big deal, listeners. It's, it's got pictures of uh, Kylian Mbappe, Vincius Jr., Jude Bellingham are their lead names on their football um, You know, option. There's baseball here, Dodgers, Angels, Otani, NBA, blah, blah, blah. So all of these names are involved. It seems to relate to... Um, Neil put it quite well. You put it very well there, Neil. Actually, it's, it's a it's a it's it's a, a trading card um, Panini style yeah. idea. But um, yeah, Panini card without a card, without a card. And I suppose the idea is if you if you if you had a vintage set of Paninis from I don't know the 1986 Mexico World Cup or something like that, um, it would acquire a value of some sort, which you could you would have bought it for X back there in the 1980s, and they could resell it on on uh, eBay or somewhere for more than maybe you paid for it. And I suppose the... With these banks, these, these don't. <laughs> nobody has made any money off these. As merely, far merely the creators of the scam. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I, generally, I, I, I generally don't think Mill should be involved in this. I, 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 I'm not involved in this. No, in um, can trade them, but they're trying to create a market for something that doesn't really exist. No. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it doesn't surprise me that that obviously this company's come along to Millwall and they've said we'll give you X amount of commission for for the rights to this or whatever they do. And Millwall have said, "Oh, thank you very much indeed." Yeah, everybody talks about a non fungible token. Yeah, crypto and all kind and the kind of stuff that I'm glad I'm in my fifties now because I don't, e I can't even get my head around all of this stuff, but yeah. I find it sad that we are involved in it. If I'm going to be upfront, I find it just sad. It's, it's a, it's a racket um, world. You're just, you're, you're selling people things that are fun to, to me as a, another dinosaur from the, from the past, but um, you're selling them something that is, is 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 intangible. You can't touch it. It's maybe it's the modern world we're in now, but it does look very much like a one way street for your money, which is it goes to someone very very rich and wealthy away from it, you and yeah. um, leaves you the down. You know, yeah, they look to partner legitimacy. Yeah, so they use Millwall. They use. Killian and Bappe and everybody that you mentioned, mm -hmm. and it's, um, yeah, but it makes them look like a, a well-run organisation. But it's not; it's it's highly unregulated. They, I think they call it speculative investments, mm -hmm. and I just think that when your bills are going through the roof, yeah. And, and people are needing food banks. You've mentioned the food, the, the Lions Food Hub. Give your money to, to that. Don't people are in this. Millwall and decide to partner in this space. And really, it's something that the that the lion uh, that the yeah, well, almost had the Lions Trust. It's nothing to do with them. That the Millwall Supporters Club, who are conspicuous by their absence on many many. Uh, things 
should be voicing some serious concern about. And we should be getting the club to reverse, go into a bank turn and to forget about this partnership. And like I said, if anybody does want to buy one of these, send up. again. Yeah, think again. Yeah, buy it. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, we'll do better with it by giving it to Cali. Yeah, so no, I, I agree with all of that, Neil. I, I don't think the club should be involved in it. Um, may, may, maybe if anyone's listening to this from the club, they want to come on. I'd, I'd love to talk to someone from the club, if you're listening, and, and explain what the rationale is behind this particular partnership. I, I, I don't have a problem I, I, with, with some things, but this does look like a racket to me. And why are we partnering with something that looks like a racket? I I don't know. So by all means, it's an open open invite. I might, but I make you right about opposing it. I think I think all of the all of the the, the various um, message boards, the podcasts, the supporters club, everyone really should be against this because I don't see any benefit to fans in this particular direction. But well, not alone. All of the sports world, FIFA. Major league, this major league, that all they're all on it because it's a racket and it makes some fortunes, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but we're not woke. Well, I'm not, you are, I know. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) There's a good note to move us along. Um, let's close the show now. I've got a couple of emails, two emails to be precise. One is one that I've received after the midweek performance from Dale McKenzie. Thank you for this. Dale, it's always good to get emails from listeners. Um, his headline is Row it out, out. He says, Evening, Nick. He watched tonight's game and all the replays. Um, it's overly clear that we do not work on technical finishing with our strikers because of the missed chances. Um, Tyler Bury's miss is a chance that his seven year old has been taught to take on the in step, says Dale. Bradshaw is always leaning back below his shoulder or flinging himself full stretch again, leaning technically, learning, leaning te- technically, aiming the ball high. Um, Rawat is going to kill off the spirit of Zian Fleming, he says. <laughs> so, an anti Rawat email there from Dale McKenzie. He, make, he says he would make a good Sky Sports pundit. Um, You're a Dale McKenzie he, he was in disguise. <laughs> so it's the Harry, it's the Harry viewpoint, isn't it? It's the Harry viewpoint. Um, we'll see. I, I, I don't know about the technicalities of what they, they do in training, Dale. I mean, um. I keep reading uh, Declan Rice for, for West Ham is complaining about playing 60 games. And now it's, it's, I can't remember what phrase he used that it was disgusting that he was playing that much. I thought, well, most people go to work every day, the, the 260 odd days a year in from from uh, memory of when I did do any that, that kind of stuff. So I don't think they're entirely alone in working hard for their living and they don't mind the money when it comes their way. So um Take that with a pinch of salt, but I don't know how much time they get to work on their technical skills in, in training. Um, maybe Dale's got it right there. It was 24 hours in a day, let's face it, and I think they only train for two, three hours a day, don't they? They probably do a little bit of gym work and then yeah. and a couple of hours on the pitch and then their own just after lunch, aren't they, generally? I do wonder. It's a good point that Dale's making. I do wonder how much actual technical input they get on the training field in terms of the basic skills i mean what what i think we all know if we play anything any kind of sport any of any kind you start off um hopefully you get better but sometimes faults and i mean you see in cricket a lot where good batsmen start to develop faults in their game they have to keep they're forever working on the best are forever working on their technique you know i do wonder whether whether we do that as much as we should do i think it's a fair point that Dale's making there um yeah. Boring Gary would like to come on and uh, <laughs> technical training. Maybe. We'll struggle. We'll struggle to get him on, I think. But there we are. Um, second email from Jamie. Actually, it was, a, it was a direct message on Twitter. But thank you, Jamie Mack, out there in Australia. Good day to you, mate. I uh, was enjoying the show, and he agrees very much. A similar point we've just been making about football taking money. Um, he's complaining about the new website stroke new app which um, despite charging money that he is happy to pay, follows the Lions. Um, small point in, in a way, but from an Australian point of view, he said they have a spoiler protector, so you can watch the highlights and games without necessarily seeing the score beforehand, which actually is is an important thing if you want to watch it after, you know, on, on a delay next day out there. Um, you want to see it without necessarily knowing, knowing the score. So I don't know if that's possible. Millwall Football Club, if you're listening. 
can you build in a spoiler protector so you can take out the score? Other apps do do that, so I know that is is possible. And that way, Jamie and other Aussie fans can watch our replay um, later in the day without knowing how it, how it finished. Um, generally, it's nil nil or one or nil one against us, Jamie. Um, well, what, it would have been more of a benefit to have actually known the score, so you can actually. <laughs> No, we always watch the game not knowing how it finishes. The, 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 no, I don't right. know how Saturday finishes, just so I know whether or not the you ever watch the game or go out and watch a non-league game. <laughs> I mean, it, this is this is interesting. He says that he's contacted the customer service line um, email, um, but no reply. So uh, money, good money, as you <laughs> yeah, well, good luck with that. It's probably gone into a it's yeah. Probably, to the black hole of Calcutta somewhere or something, isn't it? And I like this. I like this end. I like this end paragraph. Neil, keep up the good work at your end. Loving the show, but he's missing Harry, who is the resident Grinch. Harry's our resident Grinch. The uh, the Grinch sport and took away um, Christmas, of course. I think didn't he? So, um, and, but he's enjoying the show. So, a big thank you to Jamie um, for for that email. Um, and finally, I just want to mention, Neil, if I may, um, I tried to get a conversation going, listeners, with Merv yesterday, but we had internet problems, and um, it was like a recreation of the Ronnie Barker sketch where you, uh, Merv was answering the question, the first question that I asked, he was answering that one rather than the one I actually just asked. So it it, the, we had problems trying to get the link together. But I just want to mention Merv's got a new book out, Daydreams and Nightmares, Mill FC in the early 2000s, so we're covering the... Promotion from Division uh, Third Division, uh, Le- Division Two, I think it was called, and then the 2001-2 season. Steve Claridge, Richard Sadley, uh, and then the Cup final run. I got a picture of Neil uh, of uh, Tim Cahill on the front uh, doing the famous pose when he scored a goal. Daydreams and Nightmares. It's on VictorPublishing.co.uk. It's 10.99, and Merv always does. He, he, I, I really take my hat off to to Merv, and I take my hat off to you, Neil, because you churn out books and articles, and I keep saying I'm going to do it, and then I start, write a paragraph and stop. So I take my hat off to you and to Merv for, for yeah, this. Yeah, enough. I was up until 3 o'clock this morning uh, tidying up the book that we released last year. I don't think Merv knows I'm, I'm going to be on to him just yet. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, well, you can, he's found out now if he listens to this. Um, I will try and get Merv back on the show, actually, because um, it was just a poor internet connection. Um would have made a great comedy sketch, but not not so good from a promotional point of view. So do do check out um, Daydreams and Nightmares, uh, Mill FC in the 2000s for 10.99. You can pre-order it now on victorpublishing.co.uk, and I'll stick a link on the show notes when when I put this out. Um, and a big shout out to Neil because he's also producing. This is an up- update on the um, Who's Who book, Neil. Is it? Yeah, what we what we found was, or well, Dave Sullivan told me uh, that. Th- there were about 20 odd amateur players from right at the start of our history that weren't included in the book last year. Right. So we've, or I've endeavoured with some help from Dave to, to, to find out about them. We've rewritten, uh, there's a guy called George Oliver, which I'm not going to spoil too much about because I think we're going to do a podcast on him. Hmm. World Cup because I think we're going to bring back uh, Nick and Neil's uh, yeah, World Cup break. That's right. Yeah, World Cup break history show. But I've discovered uh, information about George Oliver who scored Millwall's first ever first ever goal in the FA Cup. We run sure who he was, but we've but we think we've solved that. And uh, yesterday I got three more names from the nineteen. 19- 12 13 season from the Southern Alliance that weren't in there. Right. One of them was a Cambridge University graduate who became a public schoolmaster. So, well, everything that Millwall's not about. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm currently working on that. And yeah, we're just generally tidying up and uh, 
You've uh, created you create a lifetime's work there because you're going to be endlessly updating it, aren't you? As each as each season passes, you've got capacity now to up, update it. And... Yeah, yeah, but that's what it's about. We're tidying it up. We're updating it with players that have joined, players that have left, players that have moved on, players that have died, and yeah, all kinds of stuff. So, so that's something that I'll be pushing quite heavily. Well, we'll be we'll be featuring it quite heavily because the the who's who is a magnificent work, and the the news that it's being up, updated, I think, will interest many many Millwall fans. And I recommend that you get on it when we'll put the link out for that that uh, book when it's published. Uh, so continue to watch this space. So um, well done, well done, Neil. Well done, Merv, and all those that, that produce stuff. And maybe one day I'll put pen to paper myself and do something. But manana, manana. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah, well, you know what you could do, and we're fifty, <laughs> we're fifty-seven minutes in, yeah. and I've mentioned this yet. Your memoir, my memoir, <laughs> Nicky Hart Elvis impersonator. <laughs> this is a local restaurant. Um, was it was it Ed who found it on online? Um, is there's an uh, Nicky Hart? Nicky, not a, a very only my mum ever called me Nicky. Um, <laughs> No, no one else. No one else calls me. No, if you start now, Fisla, I, I shall throw you off the show. Um, but Nicky, Nick, this guy's Nicky Hart, and he's an Elvis impersonator, <laughs> and he's working some local restaurant. I don't know. We'll have, we'll have to go. And we'll find out which restaurant it is. We'll have to go. Um, I've never, I've never met myself. I've never. I've, 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 it's, it's an odd feeling because it, it's not an unusual name, Hart. Far from it. It's quite a common name. And you do come across there's, there's quite a few Nicholas Hearts on, on online, but I've never met one. Um, so it'd be quite weird. It'd be like meeting your clone or something, wouldn't it? And he's this guy's an Elvis impersonator working a local restaurant. How about that? Yeah, was it Dave Gorman, the comedian who 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 tried to meet all Dave Gormans or something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there is a thing in it. I don't know what it's it's a it's, it's a strange thing to there was there used to be a Nick. Nick, Nicky, there wasn't Nicky. I might even been the Elvis impression person. I don't know. I think about it, but the, the, the bank. I used to have a, uh, an account in uh, Bexley Heath, and they was all they were always getting confused with Nick Hart, me Nicholas, and Nicky the Hart, and there were two of us at the same um, the same branch. So you know, you it's just couldn't have been the same one. And you honestly thought that you'd nearly got through an hour without <laughs> me bringing up <laughs> Nicky Hart Elvis impersonator. <laughs> You ain't nothing but an Elvis impersonator crying all the time. Oh dear! <laughs> I, 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 we'll have to we'll have to organise a social night out with the chaps to uh, yeah, get well, to you. Um, yeah, well, let's hope that you're not all shook up after the oh, game sure. tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow afternoon. Nicky Hart, big shout out to Nicky Hart, the Elvis impersonator out there. I'll find the restaurant. and I'll post it online. It's, it's really done the rounds. We're booking, well. we're booking for your Christmas parties. If you never know, yeah, we might send the original. Wow. <laughs> <as well. laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Great stuff. Great stuff. There we are. I think we've reached the end of our of our agenda. Big thank you to Neil Fissler for joining me on this Friday morning. Thank you, Neil. Yeah, no problem, mate. No problem. Uh, look forward. Shout out to the Elvis impersonators of the world out there, Nicky Hart included. And um, thank you to you, two dear listeners, for joining us for this Something for the Weekends. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back next Friday, as ever. Until then, or until, until after the uh, Saturday game, anyway, it's Arriva Dirty Millwall. And bye for now. Achtung, Millwall.